Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the five A notes on describing data. At the end of this, you should be able to know and identify the differences between categorical, quantitative discrete, and quantitative continuous types of data. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, the first type of data that we're going to take a look at is categorical variables. Okay, so categorical variable is just a variable that describes a particular quality or characteristic. Characteristic, okay, and that usually means that there's no numbers. Okay, that's the big easy way to try to figure that out. Okay, so color of eyes, favorite superhero, um, whatever else you can think of. Okay, something that doesn't really involve numbers. Okay, next one is a quantitative variable. Okay. A quantitative variable is a variable that has some kind of numerical value, so somewhere in there there's a number. Okay. Now within quantitative variables, there's uh, two different types. Okay. One is quantitative discrete, which is a countable number of options. So for example, the number of fleas on Sparky the Giraffe, though that would be hard to, to count, you could actually count it. Okay. Also something that would be very difficult because there's so many of them to count would be the number of people in the Mr. Stansberry fan club. All right, so again, not it's it's a number that you could actually give put a finger on and say that's an exact number. Okay? Another type of quantitative variable is quantitative continuous. Okay? So this would be an infinite number of options. And again, the way to usually remember this is that it's often some kind of measured amount. Okay, so depth of a hole would be considered quantitative continuous. Now, a lot of people have a hard time with this because they say, "Well, wait, the depth of a hole? There's just you know, just measure it, and that's how deep your hole is." But the thing with that is, it really depends on how accurate you measure the depth of the hole to. So, like for example, on this, you could have measured this hole to say okay it is seven feet deep okay but it could be well what if maybe you measure it to the nearest tenth so maybe it's seven point two feet deep okay or maybe you measured it to the nearest hundredth seven point two three feet deep okay and then again that can go for on and on forever and ever so there's truly like an infinite amount of depths that hole could be depending on what you measure to okay um, also another example of that would be the height of the tallest person in the mr stansbury fan club again it all depends on that's considered quantitative continuous because again that height could be measured to any degree any um, you know decimal point so that's why that's considered quantitative continuous Okay. So again, the difference between dis quantitative discrete and quantitative continuous discrete should be a countable number of options. Again, the number of fleas, you know, there's, it doesn't matter what, you know, you can only count to the whole flea. So that would be quantitative discrete. And again, depth of a hole, some kind of measured amount is um, always considered continuous because, again, it can be measured to any certain degree. Alright, well, let's take a look at, let's go over some examples on this together and see what we come up with. Alright, so, here are our examples. Classify these variables as categorical, quantitative, discrete, or quantitative, continuous. Okay, so again, feel free to pause this at this point and then try to figure this out on your own and then come and you know, start it back up and see if you got the same thing that we did. So, with this here, number of heads when three coins are tossed, that is not a category. So it's got to be quantitative discrete or continuous. Since you can actually count the number of heads when three coins are tossed, that is considered quantitative discrete. Okay. Um, B, the brand of toothpaste used by students in a class. 
So that, again, is a category because this doesn't have any numbers in it. That's the, usually the easiest key to figure that one out. So this one would be considered categorical. All right. The heights of a group of 15-year-olds. So again, since you're measuring something, and again, it's a number, well, one, it's quantitative, but since you're measuring something, it's quantitative continuous. Okay, thought I'd throw some extra examples in just to make sure we've got this. The preferred mode of transportation of Tunsis the driving cat. So, again, that is, doesn't have any numbers involved in it. That is going to be categorical. No pun intended. Get it? Categorical. Oracle. And if you don't know who Tunsis the driving cat is, you should ask your parents. They might know. Um, I bet you they have it on YouTube, too. But uh, let's take a look at E. E, time spent making Mr. Stansberry Fan Club posters. So again, that is going to be an actual number. And we want to, we're going to actually count that. Right? So it's, well, actually we can't count that. It's, it's a measurement, right? So time spent. Again, it depends on what you, you know, what you measure that to. So since you can't necessarily count that, we would call that quantitative continuous. Okay. And then F, number of markers used on the Mr. Stansbury Fan Club posters. Um, the number of markers that you know you actually pulled out of the box to use is something that you can actually count, so that would be quantitative discrete. Okay, and that is all there is for this section. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks.